what is up guys annie tier guild forever going to be doing a brief little review for king ojas episodes 3 uh 33 34 35 36 i was originally gonna get five but we'll get more next week anyway so um so yeah that's so that's it for this week of uh king ogers i'm gonna do my best to make it to where at least i'll get out at least once a week like king oger episodes a certain amount so Hopefully, maybe next week or the week after, I should be fully caught up with the series. And then we can go back to uh, focusing on uh, Kamen Rider Gachad. So don't worry, Gachad is coming. That or just somehow figured out a way to fit in a schedule where I can get in both. But anyway, you guys will see in the upcoming week. But yeah, other than that, all I have to say is, man, the crossover for... Uh, Di uh, the dinosaur super sentai uh crossover with uh king oger i thought that was really damn cool i loved it and funny enough i didn't realize till recently but one of my subscribers slash mods told me uh king you might he, he if you're familiar with him he is very uh noticeable in the uh the super sentai common writer um anyway i'm rambling i'm sorry king anyway so yeah um i did not know pink the pink ranger for the dinosaur super sentai i didn't know that was prince's mom so that means prince is actually the son of the original yeah of the original uh dinosaur um a uh, red ranger for that super sentai again i don't know the name completely or know how to say it properly uh, i will admit it does make me interested in seeing how that series is if, if i ever decide to go back and check it out uh, yeah so i thought it was i thought that was interesting for a moment i thought they were a thing because i noticed they did share the last name but i thought they shared the last name because they were a thing again that's what i thought okay don't don't quote me okay i did not think they were like like son and mother okay i didn't that did not went through my head my bad so yeah, that was cool to see that little crossover. I like how the crossover still carried over into the following episode too. Like an episode, I think it was episode uh, 34, where the um, one uh, mecha sword for that Super Sentai managed to hitch a ride on, uh, you know, on the flying fortress, the flying mecha sword. And they were able to get like a, a show god got tire combination with the other show gods with uh you know the dino the dino the the dino mecha sword sorry guys my mind's all over the place. so yeah i thought it was cool seeing the combination of those and it, it was epic especially when it was started break dancing oh that was so cool to see that was really cool to see i loved every single bit of it um the one thing that's the biggest well the biggest problem currently right now in terms of what's happening in the series is that the kings were gone for quite literally six months and in that time their reign well i wouldn't i don't like to say their reign because it almost makes them sound like tyrants even though gira, gira would probably like double down on that um but the point is like while they were no longer in rule let's just say that throughout those six months the galactic insects literally made it to where or at least dugdreg dudreg or however you say like the king uh, uh the king of the cosmos he managed to make his minions or his you know his his followers apprehend the each king's throne and pretty much ruling or downright just completely destroying each kingdom unfortunately yanma yeah he he lost his kingdom he lo uh, i'm sure there's a few survivors within uh his domain like uh tanuki again i forgot his actual name so i just call him tanuki but you know what i'm talking i also like seeing the backstory between them it really shows they didn't exactly were that close or they got along that well like in the beginning it's something that slowly developed over time and I enjoyed watching it. I enjoyed seeing how much they um began began be uh, how much they grew as friends as well as how they maintained this this camaraderie all this time. It was it was never like that at first. Yama was struggling just to make money in order to make his dream a reality. 
but tanuki was able to see his potential his worth and how he's willing to do whatever it takes to make his dream a reality by making it to the top and i can't help but think that's a very admirable trait i like that about him i really did enjoy how it wasn't that they were such good friends like for like a long time and at first i always thought tanuki was just like a kiss ass to him you know like every other subordinate that would be under their king or but then again yanma isn't the type of person that would just simply like have anyone be his retainer have anyone just follow him around and give direct orders to and especially not just anyone that he would sacrifice his precious laptop that he's developed years in forging uh creating because he literally made his own laptop he rather sacrifice his own his own precious device than to see his than to see one of his retainer be slaughtered or killed well not killed but take his own life in order to not fulfill the order that was given to him by that sick space bug chick so i i i i do enjoy how despite what they lost for yanma losing his friend his comrade someone he's known for a long time for him that would have left a greater scar than his kingdom fall his kingdom falling before his eyes i like that i really enjoyed um how the value of life is worth more than the value of things and then we get into the whole scenario with hemino bro yo i'm not gonna lie to you that was sick I love that episode. That was freaking sick. So that's how Sebas Sebas looks like under all that makeup. Bro, dude's a damn playboy. But I don't understand why the heck was he trying to take his own life? Was there something about himself he didn't like? Or maybe he just or maybe he just thought the only thing he was worth for was skin deep, basically his appearance. And then how that um uh, forgot the insect's name, but the one that's been manipulating them the whole entire time. Um, how he got played by Siba Sibas and Hemino. I thought that was epic. I thought that was the most, like... That was very clever. Sibas knew from the beginning that that was never the real Hemino. He was just playing a facade just to catch him in the act and then reveal to the public, like, Yo, that is not Hemino. That is an imposter uh, among us. Among us? Okay, I had to, okay? I had to. Don't judge me. But yeah, it was... It was still amazing how... Now it looks like we're going... Each... We're, it looks like we're, we're going in a pattern. We're gonna go to each individual kingdom. And we're gonna try to reclaim each individual throne for said king. Unfortunately, Yanma lost everything. And he's gonna start back. He's starting from zero again. But A... If he can start from zero and rise to the top from nothing, I think he can do it again. It's a great, it's a heavy loss for him on his part and his people, but I think Yanma has what it takes to climb back to the top. If he can do it before from nothing, he can do it again. I have faith in him. And then looks like what's going to be happening in the following episode is going to be related to Kaguragi. Man, I'm assuming Gira is going to be last, or maybe Jeremy. Because each of their kingdom has fallen under the possession of another ruler of another, or like of another um, a galactic insect. But the biggest thing, though, is even Gira, like, I hate the fact that Gira, he himself, is debating whether, like, should I really stop this? People are living in, people are living in prosperity. They, can, they have everything they've ever needed and the, and wanted. Not only are their needs being their needs being met, but their wants as well. They're given a much better, higher level lifestyle. Instead of being nothing more than like, I guess you could say peasants or at least under royalty class. They're in the same class as the kings. The kings are now considered civilians. And even as civilians, they're provided the same equal amount of treatment that every other civilian is is um in um crap in Gira's kingdom. Sorry, I know each individual kingdom has a certain name. I just forget some 
It's a lot of information, so forgive me. Ah, oh, man. But I get it, though. As a king, for Gita, all he's ever... All Gita's ever wanted what's what's best for his people. That's all he's ever wanted. If his people are happy, he's happy. And I don't blame him for thinking that way. But he has to understand. This ain't out of, good, out of the goodness of their hearts. They're doing this as a way to manipulate them. Gira, you know deep down, regardless of how happy your people feel, this is all just a ploy, a ruse, manipulation. They're using your people for something. You know what that is. Meaning their trust. A king is not a king without his people. If the people do not have faith or, or have confidence in their own king, then what's use of what's what's the use of having a crown, a throne, if they don't even accept him? That's the million dollar question, man. And that's exactly why, in my personal opinion, um right now, more than ever, he needs to gain back the the trust, the admiration of his people. He needs to earn it back. I know he will though. I know he will. Get us stronger than that. And, um, save the best for last. Rakalise is back, but as always, um, well, I wouldn't say as always. We never knew before, but now we do. Um, he's under, he's literally nothing more than a pond in the galactic insects. He's literally being used to win over or at least to make Gira lose his position in power. That's literally what all the insects are being used for to lose their own power. But now with Rakili's back in power and back in control, I'm sure most people because they've learned to be under his reign. And despite of his backstory, I'm almost certain the people don't even care that a ruler that was treating them horribly is now once again reclaiming or <laughs> stealing Gira's throne. And again, despite their past history, I'm certain they don't even care. All they care about is quite literally like, you know. Honestly, I don't even think they even care who's the ruler as long as they, is all their needs and wants are met. As long as all those desires of theirs are met, it don't even freaking matter who's ruler at this point. And that's and that's what the uh the galactic insects are doing. They're preying on humanity's biggest sins. Read. It's human nature. Once humans had a taste, once humans have a taste of what it's like to have like power, riches, um status. To be able to acquire these things, hell, even one of these things, is only going to change them for the worse. It will literally bring out the worst in humanity. And here's the thing. Humans are at their lowest whenever they reach a level of status, wealth, or um, status, wealth, or power. Once they reach these stages in life, it literally shows their true colors and they become the worst human being. That's why people that are not knowing of what it's like to be at the top, people like them end up becoming the most people. Those type of people become what's best in human in human because they are the ones that are able to look beyond their own desires and look on what's important. Our fellow, our fellow humans, our brothers, our sisters, our friends, our fathers, our mothers, the best in us. That's what someone that has no desire for worldly possession, power, that is what they are. As long as they cherish what is the most important thing. other i'm not sure if that came off as cheesy as hell but that's what i truly honestly believe 
in my personal opinion. you guys can choose to agree or disagree you but anyway that's it for me hopefully you enjoy it see you guys all next time peace